Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. With Randy Corporan. I'm KLC. This is the podcast for Wake Up Wake with up. Randy Corporan. Listen to Wake Up with Randy Corcoran live Hi. weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on KLZ AM 560 The Source, the Source or through our online stream at 560thesource.com. 560. Share this podcast with your friends and be sure to like us at Facebook at Wake Up Wake with up. Randy Corcoran. On KLZ AM 560 The Source. Well, still the way we kick it off around here. KLZ Morning Show at 5.07 on January 5th, 2015. Now, most of you are probably used to writing that 15 already when you write your checks or date your letters or whatever, but I haven't been here for, what, 12, 13 days? Zach Pugh on the other side of the glass. What I, Tuesday, I think, was the last show before Christmas, so that's like 12 or 13 days. I still understand where to park, how to get in the building, although it didn't look like I was going to get in my card. I kept running that thing up and down in front of the card reader. It wouldn't go green. I was just about ready to call Zach, but uh, then finally it flipped for some reason. Maybe it was cold. I don't know. But it's awfully good to be back here with you. I hope you had the most wonderful of holiday seasons. My deep, heartfelt thanks to everybody who held down the fort on the morning show while I was gone. Let's see. That was a pretty long list. We had... uh, Jimmy Sangenberger, Steve Laffey, former congressional candidate, former mayor. Uh, who else? Dan and Joe America. We had Derek Wilburn scheduled from American American Conservatives of Color, but he got snowed out down in Colorado Springs. And uh, Zach, I know you took a couple of days off, took a long weekend after Christmas, but you were here pretty much solid last week, except for the holiday, right? That's right. Yep. So thank you for that. And um, really awesome that we can, uh, you know, you can get some time away and we've got people who will step in and step up and basically hold down the fort. It was good for me to uh, uh, have a chance to catch up on some sleep, see the inside of my house for more than an hour before I doze off in the chair and uh, just get some other things done and a whole lot of doing nothing as well. But I'll tell you, I have been keeping my eye on things. I've been watching what's going on and uh, surprised to hear, but it was the, one of the top stories here on the Blaze News at the top of the hour. This fight to replace John Boehner uh, seems to be catching some steam. I've had a, uh, a, a public service announcement, I guess we could call it, uh, talking to people about getting on the phone, sending emails. We only need 29 Uh, We were talking about 30 conservatives needed to stop John Boehner, but it's down to 29 now. And um, there's 10 or 12 people now that are publicly saying they'll oppose John Boehner. We'll dig down into that later on in the show. In fact, in the 7 o'clock hour, we'll be joined by uh, someone we got to know pretty well near the end of the last year, Bill Pascoe, with uh, kind of a look ahead at what we can expect from Congress. We'll talk about the brief and probably... Not very great opportunity to replace John Boehner, but certainly a fight worth having. And then Daniel Horowitz from Conservative Review will be with us at 730. And uh, we had a first time visit with him before we wrapped up the 2014 edition of the morning show. He is a powerhouse and Conservative Review is now one of the first websites that I look at uh, in the morning or else in the evening when I'm kind of looking to see what's on tap for tomorrow because the quality and caliber of people that are writing there is just spectacular. So anyway, that's what we'll be doing in the 7 o'clock hour. Between now and then, we'll have a whole lot of open lines, 303-477-5600, 477-5600. A lot of different things I want to kind of work out with you and talk through. And then something that just hit me this morning uh, that seemed like an interesting topic of the morning as well related to the death penalty. We'll talk about that. Zach Pugh, we have done some changing around here on KLZ 560. So before we get into the lineup changes, I know this kicked in on Friday. I heard some of the changes. want to make sure I have these right. But first, real quick, just tell me a little bit about your holiday. Was it great? Did your kids figure out that you're Santa Claus yet? Was everybody happy and good? What? Yeah, I- no. I, uh, the secret of Santa Claus is still alive and well. Uh, yeah, the kids had a great time, especially Elijah, the five-year-old. He... I mean, that, that it was a lot of fun with Christmas on him. 
Matthew, our one year old, he had fun, but he, you know, he didn't know why. He He's one knew, years old. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He knew his brother was happy, so that's kind of all that mattered to him. Sure. And it, yeah, it was it was a great time, and I. I actually today was the first time I did anything where I had to write 2015. Ah, and so you know it's been about did, four or five days. Did it catch you? Did you have to go oh, wait? Yeah, I did. I yeah. did. Yeah, usually, which is good. Usually, I'll just write, you know, the previous year and then remember. This year, I actually stopped myself beforehand. Well, I have not been up this early and having to speak in 12 or 13 days. And when I got in the car and drove here. It would seem so bright out. I thought, wait a minute. I know we're past the winter solstice and the days are already starting to get longer. But then I, I finally could see just the faint outline of what must be a very bright moon behind the cloud cover. Yeah, that scares me because sometimes <laughs> I'll wake up and I'll look outside. Oh, wait. It, it, yeah, it looks a little lighter than it should be, but it, yeah, everything's okay. And then traffic seemed a lot higher, uh, heavier than usual coming in this morning. That was unusual. I don't know. Maybe it's just because so many people who took some time off or getting into work early because, man, when I get downstairs to the law offices of me, I, I know what's going to be piled up on my desk. It's not going to be pretty. That's, there's always the flip side to taking some time off. So how about New Year's? Now, you're 24, 25 years old. 26. 26. Yep. All right. And um, two kids, one and five, married. I remember when I was your age, I had none of those things going on. So New Year's Eve was still a pretty rowdy uh, occasion for me. <laughs> and, you know, take a couple of days to uh, get your energy back after a, an all-nighter or a late-nighter. How did you, Zach Pugh, 26-year-old family man, celebrate New Year's? I didn't even make it to 9 o'clock. <laughs> we, uh, but we did. We, we had a slumber party out in the living room with Elijah. We played Candyland. And yeah, I, I was going to try to make it, but both me and him were out before nine and my wife didn't even make it to midnight. So, wow. Yeah, it was, we we were tired apparently. <laughs> well, I made it, uh, but we stay home now. You know, my wife, uh, I, I'm in my mid fifties for goodness sake. And um, I, I still, I, I get energy when I sleep a, a more normal day. I wasn't wiped out by midnight, but I just have no desire to go out and stand in the cold or watch a ball drop or see fireworks or, uh, you know, drink and kiss strangers and things like that. It just, it's, I'm so over it. I never was into that either. You know, going through high school, I always just kind of stayed home and of course stayed up till midnight and watched all the specials and everything, but I was never into that. So I guess I'm a special case. Well, I, that's probably a good thing. You'll probably live a lot longer <laughs> because it's certainly a lot safer. I have a few more well. brain cells than yeah, usual. That's right. Well, it's the new year and so much going on. We're not going to have a major election this year. It'll be all local things going on. Uh, at the end of this week, we'll have a major announcement regarding a challenge to Colorado Republican state party leadership, and I'm really looking forward to that, and we'll talk more about that as the week goes on. The uh, national scene, of course, the presidential field is starting to shape up. We saw, it was so, did you watch any of the football? Oh, yeah, of course. Did you see Chris Christie? Just I did. Hugging or trying to hug, kind of hard to get his <laughs> arms around, but, uh, you know, trying to hug Jerry Jones there. What is up with that? What about the call? That's that's even making the national news, I noticed, coming in. The call. Oh, speaking of calls, we've got calls on the phone. So why don't we do this, Zach? Can you get us to a break while, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'll just keep talking because I've got a whole bunch of things I want to talk to you about. Phone number first, 303-477-5600. Would love to hear how you've spent your holidays. Of course, New Year's resolutions were already January 5th. Uh, I know people have already gone through some of that. 303-477-5600 if you'd like to weigh in. And uh, when we come back, we'll talk about the new lineup here on KLZ, talk about the uh, funeral of the second officer who was assassinated in New York and the fact that the officers turned their backs on Mayor de Blasio again, I think rightfully so. The Obama taxes are kicking in. You will not believe the list of Obama taxes that will be applying to people of all income levels. Uh, the employer mandate started. The Everything that Obama managed to delay with his executive pen and his executive cell phone passed the November 2014 elections for all the good that it did him. 
Everything that he managed to delay will be kicking in now this year, and you are going to feel the pain. So hate to start off the year on a downer, but these are things we have to be aware of, be able to talk about, and be able to get out into the the thinking of society over the next year or two if there's any chance of not repeating with another one or two term Democrat president here in the United States of America. And so we'll be talking about all those things and I'd love to hear how you spent your holidays as well. Three oh three four seven seven fifty six hundred at five seventeen it's the morning show. Wake up with Randy Corcoran. I'm Randy Corcoran on KLZ five sixty. Well, and don't forget the weather and traffic. Oh, that's right. Do hey. we do that still? Hey, yeah, that, that that's kind of important. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? Bef- before you do that, I it was just I had thought about this on the way into, and it just popped back in my head. This is the beginning of the second year of the morning show. This marks the uh, that we did the last show of 2014, but we started on January 4th, of 2014. So. Uh, the beginning of year two. We're still here. Yeah, I can't believe you put up with me for a whole year. <laughs> well, we'll see what we can do about that. Yeah, that's but. true. Hey, welcome back. Monday morning, the KLZ Morning Show. I'm Randy Corpin. It's good to have you along. 23 minutes after 5 o'clock, and uh, uh, didn't I hear we're going to hit the 50s by later in the week? I don't think. Actually, today. Uh, today in today. the 50s already. Today okay. and tomorrow. Okay, that wow, that is great. I mean, we have been bombarded. It was a white Christmas, though. It was fantastic, no doubt about it. 303-477-5600, that's the number for the morning show if you'd like to jump in. We will be talking in depth about the effort to replace John Boehner. You can go to our Facebook page, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran, for a quick click to a petition that will not only do a petition, but we'll send a, an email letter to your individual congressman. You just put in your zip code. Uh, and uh, uh, we've got uh, these call lists there that you can click to make a few calls today, not just to the four Colorado Republican representatives, uh, none of whom I feel very much confidence in voting against John Boehner, but look for those liberty-minded, those names that you've heard about before. There's a, we're already 10 or 12 people who are publicly saying they're going to vote against John Boehner. And Eric Erickson is reporting, we'll get into his article a little bit later as well, but he's reporting that we've got as many as 20 to 25 of the 29 that we need. So with a hard push, man, anything is possible. And we don't not fight battles because they're hard or they're uncertain in outcome, do we? So we will definitely talk about that. But the new lineup on KLZ 560. So let me make sure I've got this right. Morning pretty much stays the shame. Pretty much stays the shame. The shame? The shame. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Don't let uh, Mr. Crawford hear about that. (laughs) Uh, So 5 to 8, the morning show, wake up with Randy Corcoran. Then at 8 o'clock, Laura Ingram, 8 to 10. Business experience, business pros runs 10 to 12. So the entire morning right up to noon stays the same. Right. Then Haystack Help used to be on at 4. And that's moving to noon. Yes. And so that's an hour. Consumer services, they help people with problems, connect them with good businesses, talk about good businesses. So what we've kind of done is put the business block together. We've got experienced pros, the simply the finest pro-business show in all of America from 10 to noon, followed by Haystack. Yes. And then we get back to politics. Ken Clark, Freedom 560, that's moved back one hour. So he'll play. You, you can't see Zach, but his head's just... Yeah. Apparently, I got this down already. So, so far, so I just good. heard it once. <laughs> one, one to three with Ken Clark. And then John Rush moves into the afternoon slot from three to six. So his show has expanded to cover uh, afternoon drive up to six o'clock and then grassroots radio, Colorado, six to eight. Yes. That's the new lineup here on KLZ 560. So, and uh, Dana Lash will be on at eight now. Oh, okay. Don't, don't forget about Dana. Now is she, we, she's a rebroadcast anyway because she, yes. her live show is earlier in the day. Correct. Are, are we doing the full show? I think it's just two hours for now. So I think it's going to be eight to ten. Eight to ten. Then, yeah. that, then Dennis, now. Dennis Miller till midnight. Yes. I don't even know what we do at midnight. It's a uh, well. We have the overnight with John Grayson. Okay. Um, and I in my hours might be a little off there, but I think that's from it's either from midnight to three or one a.m. to three a.m. Okay. Very cool. And then so at three o'clock we replay. Most of the time it's a rush to reason from the previous day. All right. Well, that used to be an hour show though. So, yes. that, so you're just going to pick an hour and throw it in there. Could be. Or, or now. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 
All right. Well, anyway, the the early the wee hours will take care of themselves. Bob Duco was on this morning. If you miss Bob Duco, uh, certainly you can find him on the internet, and uh, he has podcasts, so you you can go back. I always enjoy Bob Duco right before the morning show on KLZ because uh, it kind of it, it's always fun to hear what uh, what he was talking about to see if that was something that we covered on the same day as well. He's kind of like the king of Crawford, as far as I'm concerned. So I always like to hear from him a little bit. It's 527-303-477-5600 is the number. And uh, we'll also be hearing this morning, I just got confirmation from former state representative, now state senator, Chris Holbert, be calling in at 630 just to talk a little bit about the opening session, the opening state legislator late when you don't do this for two weeks, it takes a little work to get your mouth back in shape. Anyway, he'll be calling in to talk about the state legislature, uh, some of the things we need to be watching out for, what those first couple of crazy days must be like. Uh, always a good guest anyway. Chris Holbert will be joining us at 630. Then at 7 o'clock, Bill Pasco, the legislative super sleuth, as far as I'm concerned. This guy knows the inside skinny on what's happening in Washington, D.C., and I've gotten really positive feedback from the uh, times we started putting him on near the end of 2014. And then at uh, 730, uh, 7.30, Daniel Horowitz is the, uh, I think he's the founder, or at least one of the main purveyors over there at conservativereview.com, will be hitting the John Boehner, replace John Boehner effort hot and heavy later on on the morning show. You probably know this was all over the news. Uh, the final funeral for the assassinated police officer in New York City happened over the weekend, and it was so impressive, so inspiring, so heartbreaking to see his family, but to see the number of police officers who came, the lines and lines of people standing at attention, the motorcade that would not end and the respect and appreciation and concern that was shown for the police officers. It was, it truly was phenomenal. I had the honor of speaking at a Blue Lives Matter rally uh, Saturday or two ago, and uh, just it was brutal cold, and people showed up at 10 a.m. on a, a cold Saturday morning to, to pay respects and show our support for the, the good police vast majority of good, brave, and um, patriotic and uh, public-serving police officers out there, and, and to push back on this meme, this mantra that, oh, race relations in the United States are so bad and police are on the attack against black people. It's, you know, we have, this has to be one of our prime directives as we go into 2015, is to shove that ridiculous theme back down the throats of the left because they are going to work this thing. This is how they intend to win a presidential election, divide and conquer, separate, put you against your neighbor. If they're of a different ethnicity, if they're of a different gender, I don't know. The war on women thing didn't work so well. We'll see if that tries to come back in the uh, upcoming presidential election. But this is how the left does it. It's rules for radicals. It's right out of Saul Alinsky's famous book. And I spoke at a New Year's Eve celebration. This, this that was pretty cool. From my own house, in front of my laptop camera, talking to conservatives all around the world on this Internet broadcast it was really fantastic. And I, I just loved the the ease in which you can now connect with people all around the country, but we talked about the fact that the left is going to utilize the worst of the rules for radicals, the worst of the Marxist and, and society dividing techniques, because they are so desperate. They're so desperate. Their agenda is falling apart. People still hate Obamacare. President Obama's had a little bump in popularity because he's been off the television. He hasn't been in front opening his mouth, doing stupid things. People haven't had to see him or think about him. The economy is slowly and surely, uh, slowly and steadily, but way too slowly, 
starting to pick up. People are starting to see some light at the end of the tunnel. And, of course, the left is taking credit for it. Look, Obama's policies, they worked in the long run. No, they didn't work at all. They have held us down. The longest, slowest, worst recovery in history under six years of President Obama. While he's increased the national debt by almost 75%. What? 75%. It was a little over $10 trillion at the end of the Bush administration, the former biggest spending president in the history of the world, until Barack Obama came along and put all that on steroids. He went from over 10 to now just over $18 trillion in national debt in six years. So many things that Republicans can use and do if they'll just have the courage John Boehner does not appear to be one of those people who has the courage to stand up to this president, to understand the mandate that was given to Republicans on November of last year to go and stop this president's radical agenda, not go to get along, not go to get things done. Mitch McConnell, John Boehner, you've got it wrong. And we have an opportunity to put the brakes on John Boehner tomorrow. The vote is tomorrow. It only takes 29 Republicans to stop it. Go to our Facebook page, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran, sign the petition, send the email, get the call list, make calls today. Those calls should start in about 30 minutes. Switchboard in Washington, D.C. will be opening in less than 30 minutes. Those calls should begin today, this morning. It only takes a couple of minutes to make three or four calls And so maybe once every couple of hours, pick up the phone, set five minutes aside, and you can go on our Facebook page. We'll be talking in depth about this a little bit later in the show. Who is already on board to stop John Boehner? Put pressure on the rest of them. Call Ken Buck. Call Doug Lamborn. Call Scott Tipton. Call Mike Kaufman. Uh, Those are probably not very useful calls to make, but you've got to make them first. And then go outside of Colorado and find those newly elected. You can Google their names. You can see what they stand for. You can go to their websites. We'll be talking about the lists that uh, people are putting out of who is on board, and we've got to encourage them to stand tall. We may be within three or four conservative votes of stopping John Boehner. What a message that would send to this Republican Party. These conservatives don't have the numbers to pass legislation, but they sure do have the numbers to stop bad things from happening. And they can use that leverage, but they need our support to know that we're out here, to know that we're going to have their back when the fallout starts to happen, especially if they stand up and take these steps to stop John Boehner and they don't succeed, they will be punished. They need to know we'll have their back with our checkbooks, with our vocal support, and with our relentless pressure on the Republican establishment as we fight, kick, claw, and scream our way back into some kind of reasonable behavior, some kind of reasonable control of this out-of-control Republican establishment, these elite leaders that continue to think they know what's best for you, and it's their party, they're going to run it their way. Well, no, it isn't. We're coming. We are not done. It's 2015. We are fired up. We are ready to go. I'm Randy Corcoran. It's Wake Up on KLZ 560. We just skipped right over the Blaze News this morning. We'll we'll get that back at the top of the hour. But that's because I apparently can't tell time. You can tell I've been off the show for the last couple of weeks. Sleeping in, taking it easy, no responsibility, you know, because... Uh, I worked out last minute, uh, really wanted to get Daniel Horowitz from Conservative Review back on the show before the John Boehner vote, and uh, so I scheduled it. I sent him all the times in Eastern Standard Time, which is where he's at, which said meant he'd be on at 7.30. Well, that's now. So uh, Daniel Horowitz joins us. And Daniel, sorry to keep you on hold. Sorry I screwed that up. I've been away for a couple of weeks. I'll do better, I promise. Well, you know what, Randy, some days I really wish I were on mountain time, you know, when you're in this East Coast, that's 
school it gets pretty depressing around here in D.C. Oh, it must. But I'm really excited to uh, see what's happening. I, I don't know if it's going to be too little or too late but when it comes to stopping John Boehner from being recoronated as Speaker of the House. But more and more rock-ribbed conservatives are coming out. David Brad has added his name to the list. Stephen King has added his name to the list. Where are we at in the fight to replace John Boehner? You know what, Randy? It's real simple. We're at the following point. We're at the point where if every member and incoming member who campaigned and told their constituents that they want to change in direction, and many of whom directly pledged to vote against Boehner if there was an organized, legitimate effort to go after him, if all of those people would follow through with their promises, we'd have the votes right now. Easily. I mean, it wouldn't even be close if that were true. Uh, it, well, yeah, but, but, but I'm talking about pretty direct pledges, pretty yes. direct pledges, you know, specifically speaking, not just vague change direction, but change direction in leadership in the elections. We, have, we would have about 30, um, and, and that's the thing. The buzzword right now is self-preservation. So it's kind of picture a seesaw where you're at the cusp of flipping over to the other side, and that's kind of where we're, where we're at right now. And as long as they still view it as on as the center of gravity is still pointing towards Boehner's direction, the self-preservation will kick in and tell them, hey, you know, I better stick with Boehner. As soon as they perceive that the winds of change are flipping, they're all going to, you know, <laughs> they're all going to pile on. But like you said, it's important to note who are those who are willing to jump in the sea when it wasn't popular? Who are those who, who are willing to make this a reality? And this is all a matter of perception and momentum. So Jim Bridenstine, first and foremost, is the man who got this started, the very first one. He actually t said after the election he would vote for Boehner. As much as he says, I can't stand him, I wish we'd get rid of him, he said, look, there's no chance. Um, we, you know, Republicans won a huge election. But then what he came out with you know, a couple of days ago was a very powerful op-ed saying one very important point. The world changed when Obama promised to remake our country through executive order. And Boehner said to Obama, do what you got to do. We don't have an alternative party anymore. There is no justification for anyone like Ken Buck or Doug Lamborn, all the members in, 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 of the Republican delegation in Colorado. There is no justification anymore to vote for Boehner because this is not some sort of a voice vote where there's no alternative. Each member will be called by the clerk of the House to stand up before their family members who come and sit in the chamber tomorrow on the first day before the millions of people watching on C-SPAN and announce who is your choice. And you could vote for anyone. You could vote for yourself. You could vote for any member. But more importantly, there are now two individuals Ted, Ted Yoho and Louis Gohmert, who will be nominated on the floor, and I could tell you there will likely be more choices nominated on the floor. Any one of those, everyone agrees, is more attuned to our values than John Boehner. There is no excuse anymore. And as you noted, nine, nine conservatives have already publicly joined the effort. So there is no excuse. Ken Buck needs to hear from all of you. Has Justin Amash come out yet? Because they, these votes are taken, these voice votes are taken alphabetically. So if there's going to be some kind of a wave do, during this floor vote, it's going to need to start early. And I, I would just, I, I don't think Ken Buck's going to do it. I, I think he is, you know, he's the president of the incoming class. He's gotten some pretty choice committee assignments. I think he believes that if he were to, you know, if he votes against Boehner and then fails, that he'll be shut out. And at least the first couple of years of any kind of agenda he might have brought with him to Congress is shot. What, what do you say to those arguments, which at least on the surface sound pretty reasonable? Sure. There's a number of problems, and, and, and it would take forever to go through all them, but there's one simple thing. Committee assignments only mean something if the leadership respects the committee process. It, 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 you, right now, you could you could be the chairman of the garbage can committee. It doesn't matter. If you notice, all the consequential bills are pulled out of the leadership offices and slammed on the floor within 48 hours. They don't go through committees. So, and and then more more importantly, 
he doesn't share our values. He supports amnesty. He, he's opposed to repealing Obamacare. He is opposed to fighting on the debt ceiling. What exactly are you going to accomplish on the committee as long as this leadership structure is in place? He doesn't share our values. You know, a lot of members are like, well, I'm going to do this good uh, committee work. I'm going to do this good work on committee. Really? Leadership's going to let you do that? You, you got something else coming to you if you think that. And, and, and that's the point. It is just an excuse. So this is really not a matter of a desire to do positive things on committee. It's pursuit of power as an end to itself. They just want to be called Mr. Chairman or be on a plush you know, committee. Well, and the bottom line is, if these 25 or 30 conservatives would get together and become the conservative coalition in the House, sure, they don't have the numbers to necessarily propose or promote specific legislation, but they can sure stop a whole lot of bad things from coming, uh, from coming across the, uh, from being voted on, from being talked about, whatever it is. They can stop bad things from happening. That's a huge amount of power. You know what? Look towards parliamentary systems throughout the world. That's how it works. You often have the governing party with the most amount of, you know, the most mandates, they have the most votes, but they lack the absolute majority to govern single-handedly, and they need these third parties. And those third parties say, hey, well, we want these people as ministers, we want these policies, and they have to work with them. And that's the point. They need 218 votes. You know, we don't have a majority of the GOP conference, which which would be roughly 125 members. But if all these so-called guys and, and look, let's include Ken Buck as one of them. You know, he's conservative. He's always been conservative. And, um, you know, he certainly, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> was shafted by leadership and by the establishment for many years. Well, look, now it's time to put up or shut up. I mean, here's the deal. You you will not – you. He will never have as much power as he will have tomorrow. If Ken Buck were to come out let – me, let me say something more profound than just 25. If Ken Buck were to come out tomorrow or come out today and announce he is opposing Boehner, it's over. The entire whip operation is busted up. They're trying to get every – we're doing a pretty good job on sitting members. They're trying to get freshmen to all vote for Boehner. Were he to come out against Boehner, it's, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's over. And, and, and you want to know what, something? That's the best way to get good committee s- assignments. That's the only way to, get, to leverage yourself to having real power. But when I talk about power, I mean power to actually you know, take the country in a better direction and to push conservative policies. Now, if you're looking for power to get a better office and get a better apartment on, on a, you know, an area with, with, where, where senators live that's, that's with the cool kids or, or to get on these committee assignments that – have the ability to raise more money on K Street, well, yeah, maybe we can't offer that. But in, if, if, if the leverage he is seeking is conservative policy, the only way to do that is by coming out against Boehner and, and getting a leader that at least respects regular order and the committee process. Talking with Daniel Horowitz from Conservative Review. The website is conservativereview.com. Often when I have you on, and hopefully as we move ahead Uh, in the years to come. Uh, There'll be multiple topics I'll want to go through when we have you on the show, but this is so important, such a huge opportunity for conservatives to establish their power base tomorrow in this vote by stopping John Boehner and doing the right thing. Imagine you can do the right thing and improve your chances to be an effective legislator all in one fell swoop and keep your promises. Imagine well, that's like the trivecta, I would think, for especially an incoming, a newly minted congressperson. When we come back, Daniel, uh, people have asked me, and I've, I've answered the question the best I can, what about the concern that if uh, we stop John Boehner, that creates an opportunity for a Nancy Pelosi or someone on the Democrat side to squeeze in? Hey, it's 548. Daniel Horowitz stays with us from Conservative Review. We'll continue the conversation and an opportunity, an amazing opportunity to stop John Boehner. Stay with us on The Morning Show. Wake up with Randy Corcoran, KLZ 560. 552, The Morning Show, here on KLZ 560. We're joined by Daniel Horowitz from Conservative Review. And you have to add conservativereview.com to your list of must-check websites each and every day. If you're a constitutional conservative, if you're an activist, 
Uh, there's a scorecard there, assessments of our uh, elected officials, great commentary from our phone guest, Daniel Horowitz. Uh, Mark Levin says it's the best scorecard scoring mechanism that's out there right now. And you'll find stuff from former Secret Service agent uh, Daniel Bongino, who's been a guest of our show here, Jeffrey Lord, and so many others. Jen Kuznicki. I mean, it's it's a it is a conservative's paradise as far as i'm concerned daniel and did you put this together i've forgotten i think we talked about this once before is this your baby or are you just running this thing now yes i mean you know i'm certainly by you know clearly not the only one involved there's a lot of great patriots involved in this but yeah many of us have gotten tired of the double games like we're talking about today all the people who make the promises and their actions are divorced from the rhetoric, and that's we try to bridge that gap at Conservative Review. Yeah, we are at that precipice. We are at that tipping point. A, a electing a Jeb Bush or another big spending, government growing, Common Core loving, amnesty signing president, even if they have an R behind their name, isn't going to solve or even protect us from the uh, the the slow decay inherent in our political system right now. I mean, we we certainly have our. Uh, the uh, heart issues and the mind issues that need to be worked on in people's homes. That's what homes and churches and homeschools and parents are for. But the political process is so broken, and we basically just have one big political party. Some of them are D's, some of them are R's. It's a small group of conservatives, but you know what? It was a small group of rebels that beat the most powerful military in the history of the world and created the most generous, most successful, most secure country in the history of the world, too. And, you know, Randy, that's the thing. It was just nine people, nine members so far, had the guts to go against Boehner, but that is what the people want. You know, later today there's going to be a poll coming out, actually a reiteration of the of the poll we've been mentioning all weekend. Um, you know, there's several parts to it. It's a massive poll done by Pat Cadell, Fox News contributor and famous pollster, that only polled Republican voters. You know, all, all, you know, all too often you have a general population poll and they kind of divide it up. It's a little bit harder to discern where conservative voters are, are holding in terms of their views on various issues. And 60% want a new speaker within the party. Only 25% want a new speaker. You it's never find incredible. those numbers among the speaker's own party's members. It's 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 remarkable, and that incoming, and you know, we I've seen Facebook posts uh, that say you know I've talked with Ken Buck or somebody who talked to Ken Buck says he is not going to vote against Boehner that it's a bad strategy and all that. Uh, when, if not now, when? Exactly, and all these people have a moral obligation to tell us, hey guys, what is the strategy? We have Obama who is remaking our immigration system, and, and Boehner – see, this is not a promise. Boehner is not even lying anymore. It's not like he's lying. They are openly telling us what their agenda is. They will not block amnesty. That came out over the weekend. They're going to pass the Gang of Eight amnesty bill's phony border security language and attach that to the DHS bill. Um, they're going to raise the debt ceiling, and they're going to focus exclusively on K Street's agenda. That is what they're going to do. They have told us what they're going to do. So if you're Ken Buck, what are you going to do? If you don't like the strategy to take down Boehner, how about form a group of 30 people like you were talking about and block the, the procedural motion to bring bills to the floor until they agree to keep their promises and work with conservatives? I haven't heard that from him. So what is the game? What is the play? And just to address what you were asking before the break, there, over a conservative review, we have a fact versus myth write up of the speaker's election and the process because a lot of people obviously don't know the house procedural process and a lot of members are putting out misinformation and there's one thing very clear there is no way nancy pelosi can get elected here because you need an absolute majority this is not a plurality election pelosi is stuck at 188 votes there's 188 democrats at most there might be a couple of Democrats who don't even vote for her and vote for someone else in their party. She is tapped out at 188. You need 218. Yeah. So, so she can never get, you know, elected speaker. Ne That's never going to happen. But what, happen. what about now, the uh, what actually, about this going the other way, Daniel? Where I've only got a minute or so left, unless you can stay over the top of the hour. I know I started you late, and I apologize for that. What about the possibility that some of these K Street establishment type Republicans? 
um, or, or a few Democrats, you know, the more moderate Democrats say, hey, we don't want to take the risk, run the risk of having um, the Texas representative. Uh, what's his name? I just it just lost Louis Gohmert, Louis Gohmert um, as the Speaker of the House. So we're going to cast some votes for Boehner as well. Is there any concern that's about never that? Gonna happen. They, they can't not vote for Pelosi. They're, that's not in the cards. And they know Louis Gohmert is not going to become the Speaker. The idea is to get to a second ballot. It's going to be someone more mainstream who we could work with. But I will tell you this. There is one way to get Nancy Pelosi elected, and that is by people like Ken Buck doing nothing and voting for John Boehner. A vote for John Boehner is a vote for the Pelosi agenda for Obama's amnesty. Yeah, and there are so many liberty activists, constitutional conservatives, who are ready to let the Republican Party go the way of the Whigs. This can be a defining moment, especially for these incoming folks who said they were going to fight against Obama, fight for business as usual back in Washington, D.C. That was a mantra of Ken Buck's, I remember it well. we are got a hard break coming up at the top of the hour. I know you're busy this morning. Um, so conservativereview.com is the website. Once again, I'm so sorry I got to you late this morning, Daniel. We'll do better next time. But thanks for your excellent work. And uh, what should people do to help push this issue in about 15 seconds? Very clear. We have about 30 hours until the vote. From now until then, everyone needs to contact any member who runs as a conservative and who claims that they're upset with the direction of the country and tell them a vote for Boehner is a vote for Pelosi, vote for one of the other options. That's great. Thank you so much, Daniel Horowitz, conservativereview.com. I'm Randy Corcoran. Hey, it's Randy Corcoran. Thanks for listening to the podcast of our show, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. Don't forget, I'm chairman of the Arapahoe County Tea Party. Our meetings are the second Tuesday of every month at 6.30 p.m. with candidates, elected officials, and topics of interest to freedom lovers everywhere. No matter where you're listening, please find us on Facebook and Google the Arapahoe Tea Party. Back in the swing of things on the KLZ Morning Show. I'm Randy Corcoran. Really good to be here with you. It's six minutes after six o'clock, January 5, 2015. And we have a beautiful Colorado January day ahead. We'll update Denver's traffic and weather with Zach Pugh. Here in just a few minutes, we uh, I got my time zones confused, so we had our conversation with Daniel Horowitz in the last half hour about the movement to replace Speaker of the House John Boehner. And if you'll go to my Facebook page, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran, uh, put up a whole bunch of links there. You can click right in in less than two minutes, Be add your name to a petition, your comments, uh, you can also, uh, with another click or two, send a letter to your uh, representative. They'll find him or her by your zip code. Just takes a second. There's a call list there, the people to call today. We need to call on Justin Amash, Ken Buck, the people early in the alphabet to have the courage to stand up in this voice vote tomorrow when people will be watching all around the country, C-SPAN, during this election, this is going to get lots of attention. We need courageous people who advocated and argued for a change in leadership, a change in Washington, D.C., to start this movement. It only takes 29 people to replace John Boehner. Mark was listening to our conversation. Mark is out at DIA with a comment. Mark, welcome to the morning show. Good morning, Randy. Um, so for those of us that don't Twitter and don't Facebook, uh, where do we get this information? Because I've been trying to get Ken Buck's contact information since last week. Can't find it on, on the Internet. All you can find is his electoral campaign stuff. Okay. So I'll, find it? Because I, I, I'm not going to follow your Facebook, no offense. But. No, no problem. I, I, I respect people who stay the heck away, absolutely. Um, do you have a pen? Uh, I'm actually driving it. Okay. Airport, so. How about this? Do you, do you email? Yeah. Okay. Send me an email when you get a chance. And this goes for everybody. Uh, my email is wakeupradio2014 at gmail. Wakeupradio2014. It's at okay. gmail.com. Uh, send me an email. When I send that back, you'll get all my contact information. It includes my cell phone number. Uh, so people can text me during the show. People can contact me anytime. I give that out to my law firm clients as well because, you know, legal representation isn't a 
an eight hour a day job. Sometimes it happens at midnight. Sometimes it happens at 4 a.m. So if you can send me an email, uh, I'll send it all back to you. I'm going to give these numbers out real quick for anybody who does have uh, an opportunity to grab a pen and paper. So I'll give you another couple of seconds to get that together. Because I do have Ken Buck's number. I do have Doug Lamborn's number. I do have Scott Tipton's number. And we need to put pressure on Kaufman, Lamborn, Buck, and Tipton. Especially Ken Buck, Mark. Ken Buck was elected president of this incoming freshman class. He's in a safe Republican district. He's a constitutional conservative who said he was going to Washington, D.C. to change D.C. Well, talk about the best opportunity right out of the gate to be a leader for the conservative movement, the conservative cause. What, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. I, frankly, I never liked John Boehner. I don't trust somebody with a spray on tan. So, <laughs> you know, all right, I'm ready. I'm ready to write. I actually pulled over. So give me Ken Buck. All right. Very good. Here's Ken Buck. Two zero two. These are all two zero two. Ken Buck is two two five four six seven six two two five. Four six seven six, and our, they should be open now, right? Yep, it's eight o'clock in DC. Switchboards are open. Uh, do you want Tipton, Lamborn, and Kaufman as well? Sure. Okay, these are all two o two. Scott Tipton two two five four seven six one two two five four seven six one. Doug Lamborn again two o two 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 five four four two two four four. All right. Thank you, sir. And Kaufman, just in case, is 7882. They're all 202-225. Kaufman is 7882. So, yeah, right. make make those calls. Make And don't just stop with the Colorado contingent. Uh, find a computer. Go to the website, conservativereview.com, or find some other link uh, if you're not looking at Facebook pages uh, and get lists and names of these numbers. There's a um, – in fact, let me give you something else since you're writing this down. This will be useful for other listeners who are – as impassioned as I am about th- this has to catch fire. We only have 24 hours, maybe 30 hours before this vote actually happens. Freedom works has a, a website where you can go get phone numbers to call, where you can click on a link and uh, send a, a letter or sign up to a petition. So freedomworks.com is another excellent place to look at. And then uh, I found this site last night that I also threw up on our uh, Facebook page and, of course, now my computer has to freeze up, but it's uh, a um, uh, a petition it's called Petition for Congress or something like that. I'll, I'll find it in just a second. Keep listening. Um, oh, here it is, I think. No, that's Breitbart. You can go to Breitbart. Oh, here it is, PetitionToCongress.com. Petition number 2 congresscom Petition number 2 congresscom uh, In two minutes, you can add your name and a comment to a petition uh, they've got tens of thousands, as I recall, signatures on it already. And with another click or two, you can actually send a letter by putting in your zip code. It'll send a letter right, to, a personalized letter with your name and information right to your congressperson. So all of these things, WorldNet Daily claims to have 350,000 letters to deliver to Congress on this issue to replace John Boehner. I mean, if we can gin this up today, this is the last day. I wish this movement had started three months ago, but who in the world would have believed, Mark, that John Boehner was going to capitulate to Obama, wrap his arm around him, say, do what you need to do, and we'll do our part later, and then sign off on this 1,600-page or 1,100-page, whatever it was, cromnibus bill, giving Obama and the Democrats their financial agenda, everything except homeland security for the next year? Who, Who would have dreamt? After this Republican wave, that all that would have happened. Did you think that's what they were going to do? It should, yeah. It shouldn't surprise any of us. Yeah. Look at the way he treated the Tea Party. He went after him as much as he could. He, he he obviously had to bow down every once in a while, but he doesn't like the Tea Party, so we shouldn't be surprised that he's just another, basically, rhino. Yeah. So, all right, I'm with you. Go. I'm going to make some phone calls before going into work. Have a good day. Mark, really appreciate the call and for giving me the platform to get all that information out. We'll, uh, uh, all of that is available on our Facebook page, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. And um, I'll cut and paste these Colorado numbers into a new entry on the Facebook page here during the next break. 
Also, uh, ways to communicate with me. My cell phone number, 303-885-2550, 885-2550. People text me throughout the show now, uh, and I love that method of communication. So uh, I'm happy to put that number out there. If you will send us an email to wakeupradio2014, wakeupradio2014 at Gmail. I'll respond. You'll get all of my contact information, the Facebook links, the Twitter account, my cell phone number. We'll uh, we'll drag Zach and his wife's cell phone, uh, his his mom and his dad. No, I'm kidding about all that. Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it is all about growing this movement. It is all about growing our ability to communicate with each other. It is all about us being able to act as a unified force to stop the Republican establishment. The Beltway Bandits, the K Street criminals who are in charge of the Republican Party right now. And we've got a year before the presidential election gets serious. Start looking at candidates. What better time for someone like a Ken Buck or even a Doug Lamborn, somebody who's been in Congress for a while. What better time than now, two years away from the next election, to stand up and take a stand actually prove to the people that supported you, sent you checks, made phone calls, knocked on doors, or pulled the lever and voted your name. Absolutely prove once and for all that you meant what you said. What an opportunity. And so we've got to keep the pressure on. And we may fall short, you know, but did George Washington tell the troops when they were wrapping rags around their feet to walk across the frozen ground into battle against the most uh, the strongest and the most well-funded military in the history of the world up until those times? Did he say, oh, you know, we, this is a tough one. We, I, I just, I don't think we can pull this one off. So I, I think we'll wait. No, of course not. We have to fight each and every one of these battles. And these people that we just elected have to know that we are going to be on them like flies on you know what, every step of the way. With these tools that are available on the internet, Facebook, Twitter accounts, etc., with these tools, we can make our voices heard in a way unlike any ever before. And this is an opportunity to show it right now, before the election, the effort to de-elect, to not coronate John Boehner as Speaker of the House. 617, the KLZ Morning Show. At 630, we'll be turning our attentions to state politics, uh, Newly minted state senator, former state representative Chris Holbert will be joining the show to talk about day one, what it's like in the legislature and what we should be looking ahead to and paying attention to as this legislative session unfolds. Anyway, hey, it's 618. I'm glad to be with you in the early morning here on KLZ 560. I'm Randy Corcoran. Stay with us and give me a call at 303-477-5600, 477-5600, KLZ 560. Zach is right on. That is the message for the Republican Party. I mean, I'm already out. It doesn't mean I won't be back in to influence these leadership elections that will be coming up and maybe stay in if things are going well and there's something I can do as a Republican to make a difference. We'll be having a very special announcement at the end of the week on uh, a, a change in Republican leadership, an effort to change Republican leadership right here on the KLZ Morning Show. Right now we're talking about John Boehner and the effort to oust him. And we'll get to Russ in Adams County in just a second. But Mark called back in. He tried to call Ken Buck. We gave the numbers for Tipton, Buck, Lamborn, and Kaufman. I'll give them again in just a second. Ken Buck's phone number still goes to a recording for Corey Gardner. Ken Buck, as you know, took over Corey Gardner's seat in CD4. So it goes to Corey Gardner's recording, and there's no way to leave a message. Great work. Great work, Congressman Buck. Just staying dialed in with your constituents. Now, look, I'm, I'm being a little hard. I, I will give a newly minted congressperson some wide latitude to do the right thing. Uh, if the effort to replace John Boehner falls short by one vote and Ken Buck didn't vote against it, I will probably not forgive that transgression. But on the other hand, a couple years is a long time. Maybe good things happen. We shall see. But right now, the battle that's on the table is to stop John Boehner. And Mark, if you're still listening, if you couldn't get through and leave a message for Ken Buck directly, call the main switchboard. It's a different uh, number. It's 
202-224-3121. That's the main switchboard and asked to be transferred to Ken Buck's office. Asked to be transferred to Ken Buck's voicemail. Or find a computer. Go on. Sign the petition. Send the letter. Uh, it'll, it only takes a couple of minutes to do all those things, and I encourage it very, very strongly. Getting a lot of text messages on this issue. Try and get to them. Uh, but right now, Russ in Adams County has been holding with a comment on the establishment. Russ, welcome to the KLZ Morning Show. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy um, New Year. First of all, I'd like to personally thank you for the emails over the weekend uh, that you sent out. Um, I appreciate them very much. Um, and now to the real question or the real issue, the reason I called, um, I would hope that you would focus on the end result being taking back our liberty and freedom and not focus on uh, the establishment of the Republican Party. That's, a, that's an opportunity for, for us to persuade the existing congressmen as to how they should think and how they should focus on the American people rather than on getting reelected. Um, so I would, to me, we, we've got to focus on the real issue, which is taking this country back, taking, getting our liberties and freedoms back. Um, secondly, I think, in all fairness, it is um, um, a, a little bit over the top for you to suggest Ken Buck is responsible for handling his phone out, out in Washington, D.C. He hasn't even officially been uh, sworn into office and to suggest it's his fault because his phone is being answered by Cory Gardner, I think, is a little bit over the top. Um, well, you, 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 did, you did hear, of course, when I said that, that I did pull it back a little bit, that he just got, I said that he just got there, I'm going to give him some slack, some wide latitude. Uh, I mean, I, I, I recognize that as I said it. My frustration isn't against Ken Buck, obviously. My frustration is with especially these newly elected Congress people who campaigned on Tea Party principles, who have this amazing opportunity to get rid of the face of the K Street bandits in Washington, D.C., John Boehner, who's tying himself to the Obama agenda pretty effectively, I fear, uh, with this very simple vote. It only takes 29 out of the 400 plus. And I, and I, I want to see some courage, and, and I want to see a shot across the bow right, right out of the gate. Do you disagree with that, Russ? Oh, I, I totally agree. I, the, the issue here, and you're an LPR grad, so you ought to appreciate the, the monthly theme of the power of persuasion. Power of persuasion is not by being negative and saying, Ken Buck isn't going to do this. The power of persuasion is for us as individuals, us as patriotic Americans, to call and forcefully argue our position in a way that's going to allow them to make another decision or make the right decision, not make another decision, because they haven't yet made a decision. So we need to help them make the right decision when it's time to make that, and the focus really needs to be on on what we expect as constituents and what they ran on, and, and just make sure that they understand we're out here watching and we're going to hold them accountable, and it starts it starts tomorrow. So I, I, I just want to be much more positive and forceful about persuading our representatives and, and making sure that they understand what they ran on and what they committed to, and we're going to hold them accountable. And it starts tomorrow, and we're going to be watching. Those are excellent, excellent points, Russ. And, and you know that I am often, if you're a regular listener, and I think you are, you, you know that I often talk about having to have the long view. And so I am certainly wound up about this opportunity, trying to agitate as much enthusiasm as humanly possible to get those calls and if if we can't take Boehner down, at least try and put the fear of God in him and other establishment Republicans that we're going to keep getting better at this and they need to listen and they need to pay attention. So I'm really focused on this stop Boehner vote for tomorrow morning. But when we get past that, when we have to look ahead at the agenda 
and the February challenge to Obama's executive amnesty and all the other issues that will be coming up. I am with you 100 percent. And before I let you go, we, I just wanted to say to you, I, I admire your courage and your fortitude and everything with everything that you're dealing with right now to hear you calling in this morning, be back in the battle. Uh, I respect you very much, and I hope you'll call more often, Russ. I really, really do appreciate it. Have a great day. You too, sir. All right, it's 6.30, the KLZ Morning Show. I'm Randy Corcoran. It's awfully good to have you along. We're going to turn our attentions back toward our very own state. When we come back on the other side, newly minted State Senator Chris Holbert will join us, a man who was in the legislature for several terms and has a great deal of insight into how things work as we open up the 2015 session, what is it, 120 days that the legislature, that we have to defend ourselves from our very own Colorado State Legislature. Chris Holbert will be with us when we come back. 631 KLZ Morning Show, State Senator Chris Holbert when we come back on KLZ 560. KLZ 560, I, I enjoyed a couple weeks away, but I love doing the morning show. I'm glad to have you along at 635 25 minutes to go till 7 o'clock. We'll be joined by Bill Pasco, our legislative super sleuth from inside Washington, D.C., and we'll talk about this John Boehner uh, movement to replace John Boehner and then look ahead to what we can expect, what we need to be watching for, what we need to do uh, to protect ourselves, really, from our own government. And uh, I know I've got callers on the line to continue the conversation about Boehner to comment on Russ's call from just a few minutes ago. But right now we've got a scheduled guest, State Senate. Wow. Newly minted State Senator Chris Holbert joins us for the very first time in 2015 on KLZ 560. Chris, Happy New Year. Welcome back to the show. Happy New Year to you, Randy, and all the listeners. Uh, God bless you. A prosperous 2015 to everyone who's listening. Absolutely. So big week for all of our newly minted state senators and uh, state representatives. You are transitioning from, is it the lower chamber to the upper, the upper to the lower? I always get that confused. Well, the Senate is definitely less populated. There's 35 of us in the Senate and 65 in the House, and I'm Feeling the uh, the added pressure, um, it's not half, but it's pretty close, and uh, that means about twice the the workload, the bill load. I like to tease uh, to say the great thing about being in the Senate is you get twice the paycheck, and people will stop and ask, "Oh, they pay senators twice as much?" And the answer is, "No, it's still thirty thousand dollars <laughs> a year." But um, hey, before we transition, can I go back to uh, your prior discussion? Yes, of course. I have a suggestion. We have three very good friends, you and I, and listeners to KLZ, who are very close to Ken Buck. Greg Brophy is lined up to be his chief of staff. Uh, Cheryl Fernandez, I believe, uh, is working for Ken and Lori Bratton. And I would just encourage you to reach out maybe through Facebook or, or you probably have contact information. Ask those friends of ours how we should contact Ken uh, because it is this awkward transition. Uh, Corey Gardner is my state representative, and Ken Buck is my representative-elect, um, just like Ted Harvey is my state senator until Wednesday morning, and then I'll officially become the senator. Um, it is kind of awkward, but let's give Greg, Cheryl, and Lori a chance to uh, to uh, work with, with Ken and, and us. And um, I would reach out and ask those three, how should we go about contacting Ken about the, the speaker vote? Well, I uh, I actually sat down and had a two-hour lunch with Ken and Greg and Lori and some others uh, last week. So I, oh, great. Uh, our view and our feelings about this have been uh, strongly and passionately and uh, I don't know how effectively, but uh, certainly determinedly pre- presented to Congressman Buck. And uh, I I think he's got, um, you know, he's got a long view on what he wants to accomplish in Congress. I can understand that. I've never worked in the morass. I don't know what it's like to actually voluntarily have myself elected into an incestuous group of people like those that exist in Washington, D.C. But this just seems, I mean, what do you think about the idea of trying to replace John Boehner, Chris? Are are you, uh, Senator Holbert, I'm going to get used to saying that when you're on, it's great. But what do you think about that idea? You think it's just a waste of political capital, especially for freshmen uh, who could be punished for the next two years over it? 
No, I don't. Um, it's a critical vote. Um, if, if we're going to turn this nation, we need to stop uh, embracing the status quo, doing things the, the same way, the definition of insanity, expecting different results. Um, I'm not interested in, in devoting time to tearing down uh, Speaker Bonnier. Um, I do believe that there are people who would uh, uh, perform in that position better to what I expect uh, my vision, and um, I, I know that your listeners uh, have the same or similar perspectives. So I think if we can be positive in encouraging people like Ken and, and uh, uh, Congressman Lamborn um, uh, to, uh, to side with those who are looking for an alternative, uh, this is what the process is supposed to look like. It's not supposed to look like a rubber stamp. And uh, God bless everyone who's not just uh, letting this go by and is actually starting to pay attention and making calls. Again, if we can find the right way to advocate the Ken, uh, let's do that. Yeah, it's great. And I'm getting a lot of text messages on this issue. People are saying go to their Facebook pages, put uh, information, you know, blast them. Uh, not, not rudely, don't, you know, threaten people or anything like that. Just go there and say, look, you went to change Washington. Now is your first opportunity to stand up. And someone like a Justin Amash and a Ken Buck, whose whose last names fall early in the alphabet, they could start the wave. They only need 21 conservatives to stop the election of John Boehner. Oh, that would put the brakes on the K Street agenda in a hurry, don't you think? I do, and, and this is an opportunity to use one of the lessons that I convey on Facebook and when I'm uh, privileged to be in studio. Um, maybe if you... If you take the time, listeners out there, if you take the time to contact uh, Congressman-elect, uh, Representative-elect Ken Buck or, or Landborn, any of the others, ask them four questions, How will or four words, how will you vote? You don't have to take your time to say, I want you to vote this way or that way. Ask them how they're going to vote and understand that. Um, they know <laughs> what's going to happen when they when their name is called, they know this vote's coming up. So instead of telling them what you want, ask them what they intend to do. And that way you'll know. If Ken is, is intending to vote a different way, that would be very welcome news. And the way we learn that is to ask those questions. How will you vote? Boy, great insight from our own Colorado political insider, former state representative, newly elected state senator Chris Holbert. Before we turn our attentions, uh, Susan writes on Facebook that the Capitol switchboard says there are no phone numbers yet for the newly elected Congress critters. So you have to may have to go through their local office. Landborn's voicemail is full. <laughs> Not no surprise <laughs> there. Thank you, Randy. Yeah, you're welcome, Susan. And thank you for the updated information. So there's no way to call them directly in Washington, D.C. But go to my Facebook page, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. We've got links to uh, phone lists for other representatives, a way to sign a petition, get a letter out. It'll go out today. Maybe we can overwhelm them and move this thing. It would just be, it would literally be a miracle. But you know what? This country was founded on a miracle. So we, we, we have nothing to lose by trying. That's right. And Our, I, I, I like the idea of reaching out through Facebook. If, if people do that, um, I, I would encourage you to just ask that question. Yeah. Uh, Congressman-elect Buck, how will you vote on the speaker election? Um, and, and allow Ken um, to, to answer that question. Well, may or may not. according to Facebook, he has answered it. He has uh, there uh -huh. are people reporting not not his Facebook page, but uh, people that I know that I trust have have written that someone got off the phone with him and it wasn't a private conversation, wasn't asked to be kept private. And he made it quite clear that he was not going to vote against John Boehner. He was not going to vote against John Boehner. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 he will vote for, vote. yeah, that was kind of yeah. a stupid double, triple negative kind of thing. <laughs> uh, he intends to vote for John Boehner. Uh, that, that is what I have read on Facebook, and maybe we can get somebody from Buck's office to confirm whether that's yeah. true or still true. But uh, all right, regardless, we didn't get you on to get drawn into that conversation. Uh, the Colorado State Legislature, the 120 days is set to begin. So, so what happens? You've been through this drill in the State House, and now you're going to be going through it in the State Senate. And so let's just, let's just talk about day one. You bet. The state constitution in Colorado says that the legislature, the General Assembly, it's not Congress, 
uh, meets for 120 days annually, and that starts Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. So over in the House, the current Speaker Mark Ferrandino will gavel the House to order. They'll go through the election results of the 65 House seats, and then they will elect a new Speaker, and that will be Dickie Lee Holding Horse of Boulder, and Speaker Ferrandino will hand the gavel to Speaker uh, Designee Holding Horse, and she will proceed uh, to uh, be the Speaker of the House for the next two years, uh, two 120-day sessions, unless the governor were to call a, a special session somewhere in between. Um, over in the Senate, we have an exciting transition. I'll be moving from the House to the Senate, and the current Senate President Morgan Carroll will gavel the Senate to order at 10 a.m. Uh, we'll go through the election results for the 35 uh, well, 18 of the 35 Senate seats, those are up every four years, so about half of them are elected every two years. I will be uh, taking the place of my best friend, Senator Ted Harvey, and my election results will be called out for Senate District 30, and then we will elect a new Senate president, and uh, President Carroll will hand the gavel to Senate President Designee Bill Cadman from Colorado Springs, El Paso County, and now, because the voters stood up last year in the recall election, because the voters stood up this year, we, you, the voters of Colorado, helped restore balance in Colorado government. We have a majority in the state Senate, and that at least gives us the opportunity to say no to the progressive agenda. Yeah, there, um, you, can't, uh, you can't run a lot of offense yet, but you can do an awful lot of blocking and tackling now. That's correct. It, it's not an excuse. It's mathematical reality. We have a majority in the state Senate, and uh, Speaker Hollinghorst and her Democrat colleagues have a majority in the state House. So nothing tremendously bad, I think, will happen. Um, we won't have that slate of, of gun bills or voter uh, uh, election laws uh, coming through with no way to stop them, which is the reality that we've had the past two years. Um, people ask, uh, constantly, you know, why did you let them pass those bills? And it's math. We, there is no mathematical way to stop them. We can argue. We can make our case. We can plead with them. We can um, get up in their grill <laughs> and say, you can't, you shouldn't. But uh, as long as the other side had all of the power, 33, 18, and 1 or more, uh, there's no way to stop them. Now we have a way to say no. Yeah, if, these, if the Democrats wouldn't listen to the citizens who were circling the Capitol and that were flooding in for, uh, to, for the, the meetings and the public comments on the gun laws, if they wouldn't listen to, to the citizens of Colorado, they're certainly not going to listen to the Republicans that are elected by the citizens of Colorado. So, yeah, you've got to, we've got the state Senate. That is a huge step in the right direction and uh, gives us an opportunity to at least stop bad things from happening. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with State Senate, uh, State Senator Chris Holbert. And uh, what I, I want to know a couple of things. Number one, people are always worrying about, you know, the special session or the session running longer. Uh, there may be people who want to go down and, and watch this historic moment when Morgan Carroll gets to say bye-bye and we swear in Bill Cadman as the new president of the state Senate. So I want our listeners to know how they can uh, either come down or dial in online uh, and what we can expect from the state legislature in these first maybe 30 days or so. So State Senator Chris Holbert stays with us. We come back, we'll continue our conversation with newly elected State Senator Chris Holbert on what we can expect from the 2015 session right here in Colorado. Stay with us on KLZ 560. Chris Holbert is newly elected to the Colorado State Senate, and we're glad to have him here for his first visit to the morning show on KLZ 560. And, Chris, you know our microphone and uh, phone lines will be open to you anytime. If you ever have time to drop in and see us and sit in studio, we'd love to have you. I know you're going to have your hands full for the next 120 days. Yes, sir. And uh, as we went to the break, you had asked about uh, extending the session. It's something I write a lot about on Facebook and if people are interested in the Colorado legislative process, come friend me on Facebook, and I write, again, a lot about that. The, the session cannot be extended. That's in our state constitution. It's limited to 120 days. This year it starts Wednesday, January 7th, and it ends uh, Wednesday, May 6th. Period. That's it. Period. Um, so a special session on the rare occasion that the governor 
uh, calls a special session. That's that's for a, a specific purpose. Um, Hickenlooper, Governor Hickenlooper, uh, thought about calling a special session during the 2013 floods, and then it was determined he really didn't need the legislature. He had what he needed, so he didn't. So he um, he can't call a special session to continue to try and pound on a bill that's already been run through the the general session the regular session it, it's a, it, it says it's a duo it's not a do-over of something that's happened it's a start over for something new yes it's it's uh, in sports vernacular it would be a new season um, it it can't there can't be a 121st day of the general session or more uh, midnight may 6 2015 it ends. And effectively, the Constitution, it's, it's kind of like Cinderella in the slipper. Uh, at midnight, May 6th, if we haven't adjourned, and uh, it's called sine die or sine da, if we haven't done that by midnight, May 6th, um, whatever we do doesn't count. It just stops. We, we, the, the slipper comes off, the pumpkin, the, the carriage turns into a pumpkin, and I'm no longer in any sort of authority. I'm just a citizen again on, at 12.01 a.m. May 6th, or May 7th. I am expecting that a large number of Republicans are going to want to be sitting in chamber as the new, especially the new state Senate is sworn in and the <laughs> session gets underway. What do people need to know if they want to get down there and, and support the new team or if they want to listen in on, on to the into the process online how how can they access all of that information it's a public building everybody's welcome to come but remember or consider that at least in the senate the chamber is is rather small the gallery uh the balcony area is open but uh i i will be there uh, i have a seat on the senate floor my my sons victor and carson and diane my wife the four of us will be there and i'm not sure yet um whether uh, the th- my three guests, my family will have room to sit in the chamber, or whether one or two of them will be up in the in the gallery. Um, so, if you don't want to deal with parking and and the security and the crowd, um, uh, watch on the ColoradoChannel.net. Again, that's ColoradoChannel.net, and you can always watch. It's kind of like state version of C-SPAN. You can watch what's going on on the House and Senate floor. There's recordings there. You can also get uh, uh, through the ColoradoChannel.net. You can see links to the prior session, so you can watch, uh, if you want to, proceedings from the House or Senate or recordings. There's not video yet, but audio recordings from all of the committee meetings. So those are available during the session. You can also find that through the General Assembly website. People ask, well, what's the web address? Don't worry about that. It's government. It's long and confusing. Just go into a search engine and search Colorado General Assembly and get used to calling it that because it's not state Congress. There's no such thing. It's the Colorado General Assembly, and you can find all those links at our website. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. So we've only got uh, maybe three or four minutes to go, but what, what will happen? What, how are things going to emerge? What are the hot topics? What are Republicans going to need support on? Is it too early to tell? No, I, 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 I promise your listeners there will be repeal bills to, to try to roll back some of what the Democrats have done, especially over the past two years. But the question is, can any of those, can anything like that get through the, the House? Um, we will see. A couple of things that I would ask listeners to keep in mind. There's only one tool that the legislature has, and it's called a bill. A bill can take words out of statute. That's a repeal bill, getting rid of a law. You have to pass a bill to do that. It can put words into statute, which people understand. We're adding words, we're passing a new law, or it can change the words. But whether you're taking words out, adding words, or changing words, it's all done with a bill, and a bill only becomes law if it gets 33 or more votes in the House, 18 or more votes in the Senate, and the governor signs it into law. So there isn't a way for me or a small group of of Republican senators to change the law on our own. We have to pass a bill to do that. 
But one thing, one thing that you can do, though, before we get on, and we're only going to have a minute or so for your second point, is that by putting some of these votes forward, we can get people on the record on where they stand on certain issues, and that can be very useful going into the next election cycle. You betcha. Okay. Um, Second point, Senator Kent Lambert is chairman of the Joint Budget Committee. He is a true conservative. He is going to be winnowing away at the state budget. It's huge. He does not get to do it the way he wants to do it. He's got to get the buy-in of the other five members of Joint Budget Committee. But watch that budget. If there is a conservative budget, it will be this one. And he has so much uh, responsibility on his shoulders. It is such a huge task. But for those people of faith out there, Zach, your family, let's get on our knees and be praying uh, for for uh, wisdom and patience for Senator Kent Lambert, and let's be supportive of his efforts. Um, that is a huge task, and I just so much appreciate the time and effort that he and the other members of the Joint Budget Committee are putting in. If we're going to get a budget worth voting for, it will be this one. So let's see what they do. Terrific. Uh, State Senator Chris Holbert, uh, session starts tomorrow, 120 days. That's it. I want you to know that we'll have your uh, one of your counterparts, one of the top dogs in the state house, Justin Everett, as a regular visitor on the morning show to get the view from the House side. And so, Chris, I hope we can have you checking in from time to time. I know you're going to be very, very busy for the next four months. I I will always try to make myself available to you, and if I can, I will. Thank you for all you do and your listeners. uh, You know, just appreciate uh, KLZ very much. Thank you. God bless you, Chris. And one more time, what's that channel, that website? Is it coladochannel.net? Yes, sir. Coladochannel.net, or if you're a Comcast customer, look at channel 165, 165. Excellent. And then you can always just Google the Colorado General Assembly. That's a newly elected state senator, former state representative Chris Holbert. Man, oh man, what will be happening in the state legislature for the next four months? We will keep you posted right here on the KLZ Morning Show. We come back, we'll be joined by Bill Pasco, our national Congress congressional super sleuth. That's next on KLZ 560. Stay with us. Hey, it's Randy Corcoran. Thanks for listening to the podcast of our show, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. Don't forget, I'm chairman of the Arapahoe County Tea Party. Our meetings are the second Tuesday of every month at 6.30 p.m. with candidates, elected officials, and topics of interest to freedom lovers everywhere. No matter where you're listening, please find us on Facebook and Google the Arapahoe Tea Party. Final hour as we ease back into the KLZ Morning Show. It's Wake Up with Randy Corcoran, and I'm awfully glad to have you along. 7.05, January 5th, 2015. First time in the saddle for me in almost two weeks, so uh, we've been having a good time. A lot of great calls. Enjoyed our conversation with the newly elected former state representative, now state senator Chris Holbert. All the information about the new Colorado State Legislative Session that's getting underway starting This Wednesday, 120 days, that's it. They can't hurt you after that. But so much of the show has been centered around national news. And right now, this huge conservative push to try and find 29 courageous Congress critters to stand up and vote for somebody, anybody other than John Boehner. Deposing John Boehner would be quite a coup. There are many folks who think it's just simply not going to happen, and some incoming uh, and returning representatives who aren't willing to take the chance. And But listen, we've got 20, 25, maybe 30 hours left before that vote gets underway. We have absolutely nothing to lose. And when we get to the bottom of the hour, we will repeat those phone numbers for our state representatives for the congressional switchboard. You can go to our Facebook page, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran, for all kinds of links to websites, to petitions, to places where you just put in your information, turns it into a letter, emails it to your representative, takes you a matter of moments. We should be doing that sort of thing all day long. And certainly, I will be asking our next guest, Bill Pasco, our congressional super sleuth, our Washington, D.C., insider and prognosticator, Bill 
uh, since you started joining us on the KLZ Morning Show. I've had such positive feedback about your time with us. I'm thinking we're just going to have to maybe get you on as a co-host or something. I don't know. Well, uh, whatever I can do to, to help your listeners, Randy, and Happy New Year to you and to them. Happy New Year to you as well. For new listeners to the show or people who haven't caught you when you've been on before, let's give a quick background on Bill Pasco and why do you know so much? <laughs> uh, well, for the last couple of years, Randy, I've been working very closely with Jenny Beth Martin and Tea Party Patriots, which I think, uh, from my point of view, I've had more than 30, experience, 30 years of experience in Washington working in politics and in various roles. Uh, and I've worked with a lot of grassroots groups over the years. But one of the things that really strikes me about Tea Party Patriots is that Unlike other grassroots groups that I've worked with, some of which are some of the largest grassroots organizations uh, working in politics today, Tea Party Patriots is actually an organization that is driven by the grassroots. Uh, when, when the organization takes a position, when, when the organization decides to send a letter to Capitol Hill or to sign on to a coalition letter or to take an initiative to push a piece of legislation or try to block a piece of legislation – it's doing that not because the leadership of the organization has decided this is the right thing to do, but because the grassroots local coordinators and the state coordinators have decided that this is the grass, this is the right thing to do for the grassroots. Uh, and, and that that has renewed my appreciation um, for grassroots activity and particularly for the people who make up Tea Party Patriots. It's, it, it's a wonderful job to have. It is a very impressive model, it be, and you're absolutely right. I mean, actual votes, uh, national phone calls that bring local coordinators together, take votes, make decisions. Uh, this is not a top-down organization that is telling its supporters what they need to do next. It's a, a grassroots organization that has leadership that tries to bring the will of its members together and turn that into concerted action. You're, you're exactly right, and, and I've got to say that is really, really refreshing. Yeah, I, I am proud and pleased to be a part of it as well. And one thing that uh, I heard as people were asking organizations like Freedom Works, who has a Stop John Boehner website and all these Facebook pages and events that are popping up with phone number lists and call lists. We've linked up to a bunch of them on our Facebook page, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. And people were asking Tea Party Patriots about this. And of course, Tea Party Patriots has taken a position that replacing John Boehner would be an amazing, a good, and a necessary start if it could be accomplished. But on the other hand, an organization the size of Tea Party Patriots has to also be looking at the long game. And you can't just stop in, in the middle of trying to get big things done, push large conservative uh, principles and agendas. You can't just stop on a dime and say, okay, we're going to throw all of our weight and all of our resources behind this move to replace John Boehner. It seems like something like that should have been percolating for maybe weeks or months before this uh, vote coming up here tomorrow morning. Well, I, I wish it had been. Uh, but I think, frankly, that there was such su surprise, I will say, um, throughout Washington. Anybody who wasn't paying attention to individual House races through the course of the last nine to 12 months, uh, was surprised at the size of the Republican victory. And I think what happened is that you had such surprise that, you know, it's, it's hard to make an argument that an organization needs to change its leadership at the top when the organization has just had tremendous political success at the polls. So we had a period there where basically uh, people who had problems with John Boehner's leadership as speaker, people who had been planning to organize an effort to deny him um, another term as speaker, they were kind of set back on their heels in early November when all of a sudden it looked like Republicans were going to reach numbers in the House that they hadn't seen since the presidency of Calvin Coolidge, for goodness sake. Uh, and there was a lot of question as to whether or not there would be any effort. In the last several days, though, as we prepare to inaugurate the 114th Congress, it's become clear that some of those leaders have decided, you know what, uh, doing good for the country is not just about winning elections. It's about doing something with the power that you've been given. And when Speaker Boehner and his leadership team forced through a thousand-plus page bill that spent $1.1 trillion, and they didn't do anything to defund the president's 
unlawful, unconstitutional power grab with his his decision to order amnesty by executive action. When when Speaker Boehner decided to let that pass and not to fight it, all of a sudden you had renewed interest in overthrowing Speaker Boehner. And so just in the last 96 hours or so, we've seen this effort launch. Uh, we've seen two different candidates offer themselves as Speaker, Louis Gohmert of Texas and Ted Yoho of Florida. Uh, I think we're up to nine now in terms of public statements by re- members of the House Republican Conference saying that they are not going to vote for John Boehner. Uh, and that's that's nine while they weren't in town. They're spread across the country. Uh, so when they come back tonight and first thing tomorrow, I imagine that that number is going to grow. The key question, of course, is will it grow to become 29 members? Because that's what it's going to take. 29 Republican congressmen have to vote for somebody by name. They can't just vote present. They can't just abstain. They can't hide in the back of the chamber and not speak up when their name is called on the roll. Uh, but if they vote, if, if 29 of them vote for somebody by name other than John Boehner, then John Boehner does not get elected speaker on the first ballot. When you said and some, then the fun begins. You said something very, very important. There are some Republicans or even Democrats who are talking about voting present. And a, a vote of present when the roll call comes up for who are you choosing as the speaker, a vote of present doesn't get counted. We actually, if we're going to have conservatives stand up to vote against John Boehner, they actually have to name their choice. And then there'll be a whole nother election so that that can get sorted out if John Boehner is stopped. But they have to give a name when they stand up and give their vote. That's exactly right. In an ironic way, the way the way the vote works is if somebody votes present uh, so that they can go back home and tell their their conservative constituents, hey, I chose I promised you that I wouldn't vote for John Boehner. And I didn't. I voted present. If they do that, the ironic thing is they're actually making it easier for John Boehner to be elected speaker. Because the way it works, you're absolutely right. A a vote of present or saying that you abstain means that your vote is not counted. And to be elected speaker, you need an absolute majority of all the votes that were cast for a person by name. So if 10 people, right now there there are going to be 434 votes in the House tomorrow, not 435 as there normally are because we've got one member of Congress who is choosing, uh, he's resigning his seat today because he pleaded guilty to a felony on tax evasion about a week and a half ago. So there's going to be 434 members who are sworn in tomorrow. Um, An absolute majority of 434 is 218 votes, not 217 and a half. There is no such thing as a half vote. So it'll take 218 votes. If 10 people were to abstain, what that does is it reduces the number of votes cast from 434 to 424. And that would mean that it lowers the threshold necessary to capture a majority from 218 votes to 213 votes. So it actually makes it easier for John Boehner to to win another term as speaker if anybody's out there abstaining or casting a vote saying that they are present. You've got to vote for somebody by name other than John Boehner. Now, it doesn't have to be Ted Yoho or Louis Gohmert. In fact, it doesn't even have to be a member of the House of Representatives. Somebody who wanted could vote for, you know, in, two years ago, we had a couple of votes for former Congressman Alan West. So as long as it's somebody who's living and a real person, you can't vote for Donald Duck, that vote, that vote won't count. But if you vote for Newt Gingrich or Alan West or Ted Yoho or, or Louis Gohmert, those votes count as votes against John Boehner. And that's what we need to see. We need to see 29 Republicans with the courage to stand up to leadership and say it's time to make a change. So today's the day. You can get on the phone. You can go to our Facebook page, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran, linked up to petitions, to phone call lists. It only takes a couple of minutes to leave uh, I had one guy write me and say it took me two and a half minutes to leave messages on the four, on the Colorado contingent. Scott Tipton, Doug Lamborn, Mike Kaufman, and Ken Buck. And I don't know how they could have left a message for Ken Buck. Apparently his voicemail's not set up yet. It still answers Corey Gardner when you call for Buck. But the point is, if this is going to happen, there has to be a wave of activity and pressure put on by the grassroots today. And Ken Buck is, is one of the ones that folks are counting on now. He's really between a rock and a hard place. He's a freshman. This is going to be his first vote. Leadership's watching him very closely, and I'm sure that they have whipped him very hard 
They're paying very close attention, holding his hands. They'll they'll have somebody from the leader's whip team walking him into the chamber tomorrow and standing by him as he as he casts his vote. Um, it's going to be very difficult for a freshman to stand up to leadership. But I know that there are an awful lot of people in Colorado and, frankly, around the country who are counting on him to be one of those 29 votes. Well, and one of our uh, local liberty activists, Jimmy Mack, has posted up on Facebook that he – spoke to somebody who was had just hung up the phone with Ken Buck last week uh, in a conversation that was not uh, said, you know, to be private or this is off the record. I want to talk frankly with you. And, and I have those conversations with people all the time. I respect that. This is apparently not one of those conversations. Uh, but Ken Buck has said he will not, uh, he will vote for John Boehner. And so when we come back, I'd like to talk to you real quick and then we'll, we'll look ahead. But I'd like to talk to you real quick about the consequences for someone like a Ken Buck to actually take that stand and then have the vote fall short. Anyway, it's 719. It's the KLZ Morning Show and our legislative super sleuth Bill Pasco stays with us. You must keep listening to KLZ 560. We'll continue our conversation with Bill Pasco, our legislative super sleuth from inside the Beltway on KLZ 560. When we went to break, Bill, but, and I don't want to stay bogged down on the anti Boehner thing. We can talk about that in our final half hour with open lines. People have been calling and texting about it. But before we turn our attention to other topics, uh, what are the risks and the consequences to someone like a Ken Buck, who apparently, if this Facebook post is to be believed, has taken the position that he will vote for John Boehner because the risks. Well, I, I guess I'm not going to give his reasons because that's not part of this post. But uh, I, I'm guessing it's part in, in part because the risks are too great. Well, there, there are all sorts of risks. Let, let's go in ascending order of possible uh, retribution type punishments. The, the first thing they can do is strip you of your committee assignments. Uh, now, a freshman, frankly, isn't going to. He has. He probably hasn't been appointed, and I, I wish I, I had a list of Ken Buck's committee assignments in front of me right now, but the odds are very good that he has not been appointed to what are called the A committees or the power committees. Those are the big committees like the Ways and Means Committee, the Judiciary Committee, the Armed Services Committee, the Appropriations Committee, the Energy and Commerce Committee. Uh, those, are, those are big committees that deal with a lot of important legislation, and frankly, one of the reasons that they're called power committees is because sitting on that committee uh, puts you in a position to receive an awful lot of campaign contributions from an awful lot of lobbyists. It's just that simple. So the first thing they can do is take you off a committee. Um, if that's not enough, if they think you need uh, to be made an example of, um, they can announce very loudly that the National Republican Congressional Committee, which is the, the national party organization whose mission is to elect Republicans to the House of Representatives, uh, they'll announce that the NRCC is not going to fund you when you run for re-election. So you're going to have to do it on your own. Um, and for a lot of members, that alone, the threat of losing NRCC funding, is something that they they really do get me knocked about um, because they don't raise that much money themselves. And then the third thing they can do, if they really want to make an example of you, is they announce that they're going to support a primary challenge against you when you run for re-election. Mm. So that doesn't just that that sends a signal to the money community, both the GOP establishment donor base and to the lobbyists on K Street, who frankly don't care whether Republicans or Democrats are in power. They're just giving contributions to incumbents to make sure that they have access for their clients. Yeah, and, uh, that sends a signal. You and, know, that sends a signal to the money people. So, and John so, Boehner himself is a big money raiser. He raised a hundred thousand dollars a piece for numerous congressional candidates during the 2014 cycle. Uh, that's ba right. Boehner and, fundraisers and the, are huge. That's right. And with the increased cost of of running for the House of Representatives over the last several cycles, it's just exploded. We've we've now got multiple million dollar campaigns for the House. I can when, when I got started in this business. Uh, more than 30 years ago, Randy, if you raised a million dollars to run for the House of Representatives, that was eye-opening. Nowadays, you know, that's last month's fundraising total. Yeah. It's, it's really out of hand. Yeah, and uh, and these folks, once they get to Washington, D.C., especially the new people who don't have these huge fundraising networks set up, who aren't well-connected in the, the machinations of Washington, D.C., 
uh, they have to spend, what, 50, 60 or more percent of their time raising money for the next election cycle. It's a huge amount of time just to have money to compete. It, it is. But, you know, here, here's the thing. Um, about 20 years ago, the Democrats on Capitol Hill started trying to push campaign finance reform. Uh, and, and one of the things that they were looking for was they, they take this notion that it takes so much money to run for office. And they said, you know what, we should come up with a plan to address that. Let's have public financing of campaigns. Let's have the taxpayers pay for it so that anybody who's qualified can run. Well, aside from the obvious objection that, you know, if anybody in this country doesn't need welfare, it's politicians, for goodness sake, people running for the House of Representatives shouldn't be able to collect money from taxpayers who are working hard and have a tough enough time making ends meet. What they decided was, let's put a threshold in place. We'll have public financing of campaigns, and nobody can spend more than $600,000. And that sounded great until you, you kind of wondered, well, wait a minute, 600000 that's an odd number. Why wouldn't it be 500000 or 750000 something, a nice round number that makes more sense? When we looked into it, we found out that – if you went back and looked at the three previous cycles, no challenger who had spent less than $600,000 had successfully defeated an incumbent. So setting the threshold at $600,000, nobody can spend more than $600,000 was a way of ensuring that no incumbent was ever defeated. What it's really about is trying to silence the political speech of people who oppose incumbents. And so while I, I can stand here and bemoan the fact that it costs a lot of money to run for office, I certainly wouldn't want to see contribution limits go into place. I certainly wouldn't want to see expenditure limits go into place, because the bottom line is it takes money in a modern society to communicate your message. And that's what challengers need, because incumbents start with all the advantages. They start with $2.5 million in every two-year cycle, paid for by the taxpayers, they get a staff whose real job is to get the congressman reelected, whether they're working for the, the press, they do the press for the congressman, or they work with constituent services, or they draft legislation and keep him apprised of what legislation is coming to the floor. Everybody in that office knows that their first job is to make sure that the boss gets reelected. And that comes courtesy of a $2.5 million gift from the, t from the taxpayers. So – Incumbents begin every two-year cycle with a tremendous advantage over their challengers. And, and we, as much as we wish it didn't cost so much money to campaign for Congress, it does. That's a simple fact of life. And we don't need to be doing anything to make it even harder for challengers to overcome the challenges that they face when they take on an incumbent. Man, oh, man. It, it, it's just such a cesspool. You can see why the movement, the Article 10 Convention of the States to pass constitutional amendments to change some of these things uh, is gathering such steam around the country. Uh, we, we have to use every lever and every tool at our disposal to try and push back against a very stacked deck. But what you've pointed out is that for especially for newly minted uh, Congress critters, newly minted elected representatives, that the. Uh, it's a very perilous cliff to jump off of, to stand up and have your very first vote be one to stop the money-generating, Obama-loving, amnesty-loving Speaker of the House, John Boehner. Yeah, it's a, it's a very big hill to climb. Um, and the odds are very long, and the odds are that they're not going to succeed. But God bless them for having the courage. We, we've got nine who have come out openly and said, yeah, go ahead, Mr. Speaker, do your best. But I'm voting against you. I'm going to vote for somebody else on Tuesday because I think we need a change in leadership. And I think, you know, we, we saw a poll come out um, on Friday that indicated that 60 percent of Republican voters around the country think it's time for a change in the speakership. And 64 percent of them said that John Boehner has not done an effective job of opposing Barack Obama. Now, when almost two thirds of the voters who put your team in power, who gave you a Republican majority and made it possible to elect a Republican speaker. When two-thirds of those voters say it's time for a change because, because the guy who's in charge now has been ineffective, you just got to wonder, how can a Republican member of Congress show up tomorrow and be sworn in and, and then call out John Boehner when they ask him who he wants as speaker? Do they really 
intend to turn their backs on the voters so soon after winning that election? It was just a few weeks ago in November that they won, after all. It's it's frightening to think about how strongly the deck is stacked against us. And, uh, Bill, I know we're at the bottom of the half hour. We've got a very short break. We're going to pull our bottom of the hour news. Don't know if you can stay with us or not, but if you can, I'd like you to. You said something last night on a phone call that uh, that I was on that the big decision that has not yet been made in D.C. is whether Republicans want to pass legislation that the president won't sign or want to pass legislation that he will And I think that's a very interesting topic to explore. If you can stay with us for one more segment, if you can, we'll take a very short break and be right back to you. Somebody who uses an executive pen and an executive cell phone to violate the Constitution, to change the law. All of the Obamacare taxes rolling out here in 2015, including the employer mandate, which he unilaterally delayed until after the November 2014 elections for all the good it did him. And we have Republicans who are thinking about whether we want to pass legislation that the president won't sign or whether he will. We'll continue that conversation with our legislative insider, Bill Pascoe, when we come back. Stay with us. It's Wake Up with Randy Corcoran on KLZ 560. Bill Pascoe stays with us at 736 on the KLZ Morning Show. I appreciate it, Bill. I didn't mean to keep you so long, but you said something very important last night that the Republicans are considering right now, and and I, I guess I understand from a distance why they'd be having this thought. Do they want to be a Republican Congress that actually gets things done? I've got my fingers up in the air with quote marks, gets things done, or do we want to do, in my mind, what each and every one of these people promised to do, and that is stop the Obama agenda by sending legislation that the president won't sign, to draw those lines, to get people on the record. Uh, Let's talk about that a little bit. Well, you know, um, what's going on here is is that for the last four years, Randy, under Harry Reid, the Senate basically shut down. And, you know, once Republicans took control of the House after uh, after the 2010 elections, It became clear that President Obama was not going to get the legislation that he really wanted. He had two years there at the beginning of his first term, 2009, 2010, where he had a Congress where he owned both houses. Nancy Pelosi as Speaker in the House and Harry Reid as Majority Leader in the Senate. And he pushed through some truly expansive legislation. Uh, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. He pushed through the Dodd-Frank financial reform. He pushed through a a stimulus package that that borrowed almost a trillion dollars. He made major changes in the law in that first two years. And the public reacted strongly against that and and gave the House back to the Republicans. And once that happened, he knew that he wasn't going to get the kind of big-ticket, big-government, liberal-approach legislation that he would have liked. And what happened is that the Senate, under Harry Reid, for the last four years, became a blocking mechanism. All kinds of good legislation has come out of the House over the last four years, but it hasn't seen the light of day in the Senate because Harry Reid decided that he was going to be uh, the principal defender of the president in the Congress. And he kept a lot of stuff from even being debated so that there was no chance that it could ever show up on the president's desk. Well, now that situation has been changed yet again. Republicans have taken control of the Senate. We pick up nine seats in in a cycle where I can remember as recently as six months ago, some of the smartest people in the business were saying the best Republicans could hope for was maybe a two or three seat pickup. Um, Nevertheless, Republicans picked up nine seats because voters across the country rejected President Obama and the path that he's taking the country on. Now you've got a question. That is, do you want to show that you can, quote, unquote, legislate, that you can, quote, unquote, govern? And to do that, you would put bills on the president's desk that he'll sign, bills that get to the president's desk because there's bipartisan cooperation in getting that bill to the desk. Or do you use the next two years to draw lines in the sand and show the contrasts very clearly to the American public? If you want to govern, if you want that is, if you want to pass laws that he'll sign, then obviously you've got to get some Democratic buy-in. Because first off, you've got a 60-vote threshold in the Senate. Well, re- Republicans have 54 seats in the Senate, which means on any measure that they want to put on the president's desk, they've got to hold all the Republicans together, and they've got to pick up six votes from the Democrat side to be able to break a filibuster. 
So those six Democrats, whoever they might be, and there'll be a shifting cast of characters depending on what the issue is, but those six Democrats are going to have some leverage. They're going to be able to negotiate for something in a piece of legislation in order to get their support. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it would be to say, you know what, the country has gone so far off track in the wrong direction that what we really need to do is to spend the next two years doing something that the country probably doesn't like big picture, which is to play politics again. And that would be to send the president legislation that they know he won't sign solely for the purpose of drawing bright lines in the sand. Uh, let's take let's take one issue and talk about it in this context. Obamacare. If you want to send the president a bill that he's not going to sign, send him a repeal of Obamacare. A simple one-page bill that says the Affordable Care Act is repealed. Simple. That could pass the House. In fact, it has passed the House. It's never received a vote in the Senate. But I believe that for political reasons, to get everybody on the record, there's going to be a vote in the Senate on a flat-out repeal bill. Now, whether or not it gets 60 votes or whether what we end up with is the cloture vote, there's going to be an effort to repeal Obamacare. But even if it were to move through the Senate and go to the president's desk, everybody knows he's not going to sign that bill. It's got his name on it. It's a program that's got his name on it. He'll go down in history with that program. So he's not going to sign that bill. If, on the other hand, what you want to do is to, quote, unquote, govern, then you take small pieces of Obamacare that are very unpopular, even among Democrats, like the medical device tax. You got a 2.3% sales tax, basically, on medical device that's now built in the United States. And this is hurting the economy. This is keeping medical device manufacturers from growing their employment roles. Democrats support repealing this provision. And the thing is, it really doesn't have anything to do with Obamacare itself. It was a funding mechanism to pay for Obamacare. So if you want to, quote, unquote, govern... You take that one small section of Obamacare, you move that through the House, move that through the Senate, and then put it on the president's desk, and he would probably sign it, because it doesn't really undo the thing that he really cares about. Um, so that's, that's an example. And, and what I think we're going to see on Obamacare is we're probably going to see both. We're probably going to see a repeal bill move to the president, and we're probably going to see, and he'll veto that, and then we'll see a medical device tax repeal also move to the president which he may sign. Such a convoluted mess. What, what's your view? 30 years as an insider, uh, a, a virtual encyclopedia of the legislation, of, of history, of election results, Bill Pasco from Tea Party Patriots. What do you see as the best strategy when we know that the big prize is still ahead, the 2016 presidential race and holding on and maybe building on that Senate majority? That That's the prize. That's the carrot that every Republican, every conservative has to be concerned about and looking forward toward. So what do you think is the best strategy to, to keep the, the base mobilized and energized and involved, but also not push off those, uh, you know, last minute before the election people whose votes that you need in order to win a presidential race? Well, Randy, it's, it's been my experience that elections are about choices and campaigns are about contrasts. Um, you know, for years, I've listened to the, the academics and, and the good government types tell us that politics is a game of addition and multiplication. And frankly, it's not. Uh, it, it's a dirty little secret of politics that effective politics is actually a game of division and subtraction. The country is divided any number of ways you can think of. The Congress is divided any number of ways you can think of. There's the House versus the Senate, Republicans versus Democrats appropriators versus non-appropriators. Um, what I think we need to do, and, and when I say we, I'm speaking of the broader conservative movement. I think that Obamacare is such a tremendously damaging piece of legislation. I cannot think of another piece of legislation that's passed in the last 60 years that does the damage to the country on, on a number, any number of levels. It's bad for our health care. It's bad for our financing. It's bad for our long-term debt. It's bad for the notion of constitutional government. It's bad for the notion of individual liberty. I think Obamacare 
is such a bad piece of legislation that our political goal for the next several years must be to repeal this legislation root and branch. And in order to do that, we have to recognize we cannot do that until and unless we have a Republican sitting in the White House who has committed to repealing Obamacare and we have a filibuster-proof majority in the Senate, and we still control the House. Those are three big things. I think in order to make that happen in 2017, two years from now, let's have this conversation looking forward to the installation of the 115th Congress with a new Republican president getting ready to be sworn in just a few weeks down the road. In order to do that, I think you got to go with the bills that he won't sign. I think you've got to show the country an alternative vision of what Republican leadership will look like. And the way to do that is not to compromise on the edges. It's to have very clean edges. You don't want anything fuzzy here. You don't want legislation that everybody kind of goes, yeah, I can support that, I guess. Yeah, raise a banner of... That's it. You you want strong legislation. Raise a banner of bold colors, not pale pastels. The most successful Republican president in history, 49 states, some say 50, re-election campaign. Ronald Reagan made it, made it clear. And I, I, the problem is, Bill, and I, I know you've been really generous with your time, and thank you for that. I'll let you go here. But the, the thing that people need to understand is that the many of the those in leadership in the Republican Party are pushing back against bold colors, not pale pastels, because they are part of the Kate Street corporatist agenda. And so we have to be ready to shut them down at every turn and in every way that we can and not back down no matter what. Bill? You're right. All righty. Well, Randy. Bill, I didn't mean to burn you out on the first Monday or first appearance on the KLZ Morning Show. I hope you'll come back again and talk to our listeners real soon. Anytime you'd like, Randy. Thanks for having me this morning. You bet. That's Bill Pasco, Tea Party Patriots. Uh, Google him, P-A-S-C-O-E, to see what he's writing, see what he's thinking. Really grateful to have that kind of information uh, available to you here on the morning show on KLZ 560. We've got a few minutes left. Final segment, 303-477-5600 is the phone number if you'd like to weigh in. A few minutes for phone calls when we come back on KLZ 560. I'm always excited when I see this name pop up on my screen. Anil Matai from Adams County, vice chairman of the Adams County Republican Party, passionate, articulate liberty leader here in the state of Colorado. He joins us now on KLZ 560. Happy New Year to you, Anil, and welcome back to the show. Randy, Happy New Year. Uh, so glad that you're back, and uh, thank you for this opportunity. Yeah, you bet. Well, I just wanted to let you know that I wanted to thank you for uh, pushing this uh, issue for tomorrow. Um, you know, I think, you know, two years ago with the gun bills and, you know, the Democrats not even listening to anyone in the state of Colorado and running through their agenda. And they have the right to run their agenda because they were elected in, but uh, not even listening to people. Uh, they did what they had to do. And uh, and I think we're in the same situation here with the, uh, you know, six, passage of the 1603 page omnibus bill here. Um, the Republican establishment is doing the same exact thing and they need to be sent a strong message. And so. Um, the call that was done around 6.30 this morning saying that we have to listen, of course, we're civil, of course, we're respectful, but uh, we're not uh, playing games anymore, and uh, we weren't playing games anymore, and we we need to hold people to account. Yeah, I, I'm just terrified by some of these newly elected Congress people, especially, who campaigned on a strong message of changing Washington, D.C., changing the leadership, changing the direction who would so quickly at the very first opportunity to take a stand with powerful conservatives around them, like Louis Gohmert throwing his hat into the ring for Speaker of the House, that they would stand up and say, I support John Boehner as the Speaker of the House. He is the example. He is the poster child for everything that's wrong in Washington, D.C. right now. I totally agree. And I don't understand. I mean, I understand strategy. I understand long-term views, but we didn't send people for long-term agendas in Congress. Today, we have to oppose Obama and the, his, his uh, communist agenda. And I don't understand this long-term view at this moment. We don't have a, a long-term nation to, uh, to deal with. We are about to lose our nation. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so 
I am glad that uh, Congressman Goldman put his name down. I think another name that would just trump uh, Boehner immediately is if you put Alan West's name down. You don't have to be a, a sitting congressman. You put Alan West's name in there uh, or someone else, and automatically it'll just trump the president. Um, so uh, we sent people there for a reason. And if these Republicans do not understand this and they keep playing these games, uh, uh, they need to be primaried out because this is, we can't play we can't play games anymore. No, and if you if you're, have access to Facebook, go to our Facebook page, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. I've got all kinds of links up there to with phone lists, ways to sign a petition that will get to Congress today and tomorrow. We'll send an email letter directly to your representative based on your zip code. takes you just a couple of minutes. It's worth it today. This is a fight. Maybe we won't win. Maybe we'll just put a scare in the establishment. But every time we make one of these pushes... Uh, it, it has to send a message to these people, and, and maybe sometimes that's all we can do. And I totally agree with that, Randy, and I would say, say one more statement here. When we put party above principles, we get neither. And that's I would tell my fellow Republican voters that if we keep compromising this direction, we don't gain anything. We just lose uh, uh, our nation. We lose our Constitution. And what we're giving to our children is uh, abysmal. I mean, it's outrageous that we're set, setting up our children for slavery with a, a you know a 1.1 trillion dollar nine month bill that we passed. Uh, this is not conservative leadership at all. This is complete failure, and we need to oppose it. The Republican Party needs to realize that uh, history can repeat itself. The Republican Party replaced the Whigs, and I'm not sure yet what would replace the Republican Party. But if they lose us, if they lose the grassroots, they lose everything. Yeah, it's uh, the first three letters of the Constitution. Uh, first three words, I'm sorry, is we the people. And, and they, the, uh, the political elite will fear we the people. And it's up to us to stand up and, uh, and let the, the politicians know who's in charge. It's not them anymore. It's us. Talking with Anil Mathai, the vice chairman of the Adams County Republican Party. Anil, you've been traveling around the state giving presentations on taking back and changing leadership here in Colorado in the Republican Party. And we're going to have a big announcement on the radio show later on this week about a challenge to Colorado State Republican Chairman Ryan Call. But what is part of the process? What are the deadlines that are coming up? What do people need to be doing right now to have a chance to make that same statement, this kind of message we're trying to send to John Boehner and the Washington elite, to the Republican establishment right here in the state of Colorado? Well, what's happening at the county level is the first thing is at the county level, you're going to have organizational meetings in the month of December, I mean, February next month, in about four or five weeks. And uh, the people who are precinct committee people, district captains uh, and other officers within the county level have an opportunity to elect a vice a chair, a vice chair and a secretary for their county uh, party. And um, so you need to get involved. If you're not one of those members, you need to um, petition them uh, to vote for conservative, true conservative leadership. And um, once you change the county structure to con- uh, truly conservative, then the ne- uh, immediately after the county elections is the congressional district elections. And, um, and and then you go from there to the state uh, party uh, meeting, which I believe is March 7th, Saturday, March 7th. Um, so that's where we're at. And uh, if we change our counties, um, then we change our state. And so it's important that everyone gets involved. And whether you're a voter or not, within your county party structure, you need to contact those who are voters and, and lean on them to stand up for our Constitution. Where can people find the cheat sheet, the, the plan, uh, to remind them to go to their county websites and get those dates and show up and get people together and all that? Well, they can contact with me on Facebook. They can contact their conservative leaders in their counties. Various Tea Party uh, leaders have that information. Conservative people have that information. And, um, and, and it'll be, it's readily available. But uh, first, find out your county uh, organizational meeting date. It's going to be sometime in February in Adams County. It'll be February 7th. Uh, and then we'll have a uh, congressional district meet, uh, uh, dates. I don't have all those dates. Well, that's, that's all right, Neil. Let's stop yeah. it there in the interest of mm-hmm. time. We'll have you back. We'll keep this conversation going as well. I appreciate you calling in this morning. Uh, big doings ahead for the Stop the Boehner vote tomorrow. And uh, look forward to future conversations and to see what you're up to in 2015. Thank you very much, Neil Mathai from Adams mm-hmm. County. I'm back. Thank you. You bet. 7.58, only a minute or so to go. Man, it's really been nice to be back on the morning show here on KLZ. Had a nice break. I enjoyed it. You know, all the other times I've been off the show last year were usually for funerals and hospitals and different things like that. So 
uh, felt good to take a break. But I am so excited to be here, fired up, ready to go with you as we march into 2015 and continue to defend our nation, our state, our family, our kids and our grandkids. That's really what it's all about. Please go to my Facebook page, Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. Got all the links and tools you need to help this movement to stop John Boehner. The election is tomorrow. It only takes 29 conservatives. If you don't do Facebook, send me an email, wakeupradio2014 at gmail.com. Later this week, we'll be having a big announcement about a challenge to Colorado State Republican leadership. That's going to be huge. Tomorrow, Christopher Doss from Revolutionary Communications returns. And, of course, the lineup change here on KLZ 560. Everybody's here at different times, so stay close to your radio dial. I'm Randy Corcoran. It's Wake Up on KLZ 560. Laura Ingram is next. Hope you have a terrific Monday. You've been listening to the podcast of Wake Up with Randy Corcoran. You can access these podcasts anytime at soundcloud.com forward slash Randy Corcoran or at our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Wake Up KLZ. Please show your support by giving us a like and a follow and leave any comments and or feedback you may have. If you'd like to be a guest on our show, please send us your name, a short bio, and the best way we can get back to you. Thanks again for listening to the podcast of Wake Up with Randy Corcoran.